For 2022, this F-Type is all in on performance. The supercharged V8 is now standard for 2022. And in this video, we're gonna look at this true sports coupe with this Jaguar F-Type. I'm gonna show you all the exterior details, the interior details, and of course, get it out on the road for a test drive. Listen to the sounds, let's get started. Real quick, thank you so much for watching. My name is Nolan. I do full reviews like this every single week, but if you wanna skip around from part to part, look in the description below. I put timestamps down there so you can go to whatever part you want. And if you wanna see another video like this, I just got done with the F-Pace SVR, super blast. Check in the description below, but let's jump into this one. Now let's take a quick look at the exterior. You can get this in coupe or convertible form rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And right up front, you'll notice you got the vents on the hood, this giant clamshell hood, and you've got these super slim LED headlights with the LED uh, daytime running light. Plus we have the gloss black accents all over with our package. This paint color is the British Racing Green. I think it looks fantastic. It's got a nice sparkle to it in the daytime. It looks very deep. When it's darker, it just looks excellent. 20 inch wheels are gonna be standard, but these are optional wheels and you can even get optional red brake calipers, and these wheels in the back or the tires in the back are wide at 295. Overall dimensions are 176 inches long, so it is quite compact, and there's just under four inches of ground clearance, so be careful with that. And the rear end has these massive hips, just these huge haunches to give it a wide, aggressive look, and the rear track is actually about two inches wider than the front. Plus, you even have a little deployable spoiler in the back, and these slim LED taillights match this front LED lights really well, and this nice quad exhaust that we'll listen to in a little bit. One nice feature on our F-Type is the available power trunk. And I love the way that it lift up, lifts up like that instead of just a traditional trunk. And this is actually pretty wide. It's 14 and a half cubic feet. It's, uh, or not necessarily wide, it's pretty good size. It's just kind of long and deep actually. So there's even a few tie down points in here as well, but 14 and a half cubic feet, considering the overall dimensions and shape, not bad. Under the floor, there's a little tire inflator kit and extra area for some storage. That's always nice to see. And in case you missed it, if someone wants to look through the back, you've got this cargo cover so nobody can see inside. Now let's look at the key fob. So you've got an actual metal piece over here that says Jaguar. You got a button to turn your lights on. You can open up your trunk. The smart key system, a keyless access is actually optional. I'm really surprised by this. Push button start is standard, but in order to actually get in here, just by pushing the button, you need the optional keyless access. I love how it says Jaguar on it. You can pull that door handle and then to lock it, shut the door. You can just tap that and it locks. The mirror will power fold. You just can't remote start the car on your key fob. But let's take a look at these front seats. So first of all, we have optional seats here. These are the Windsor Leather Performance Seats. I think they look great. They look similar to what they did in that F-Pace. You've got the Jag up in the headrest. I think it looks really nice, the stitching around here. They have good bolstering on the side. They have good bolstering on the bottom to hold you tight without being aggressive and overbearing. The leather in here is also pretty soft. I honestly think these maybe feel a little bit more comfortable than they were in that F-Pace I was recently in. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but I've been comfortable in here. Otherwise, six-way power seats will be standard and they'll be leather with like a suede in them. The controls are over on the door. You can see you've got like a four-way lumbar. We have 12-way power with these optional seats including our memory settings, three position memory settings, which is really nice. We also have a power steering wheel that can go to our memory settings as well. And it's leather wrapped, so that's cool. Now I have this seat all the way back. So those of you that are tall, I'm five foot nine. I just moved this back to show you. I don't sit with it all the way back, but considering the fact that we have all of this behind us, we can't really scoot the seats back a whole lot. You're gonna wanna get in here yourself and make sure that this is gonna be enough room. Five foot nine, I'm okay, but I think if I was a little taller, I'd be a little bit, a little bit squished. Another optional feature on these seats is that they are heated and cooled. And comfort wise, like I said, I've been comfortable in here. I think they're a little bit more comfortable than they were in that F pace, but there's different kinds of seats you can get in here from the regular to the performance to just a regular leather too. And headroom, like I said, I'm five foot nine. This is about how much room I have above me. So keep that in mind. All right, now let's take a look at the interior of this F-Type. So there's a lot of nice materials in here. We actually have some option for extended leather in here as part of our interior package. It's just nice all around, but let's start it up. Push button start. 
And this is with the exhaust turned off. We'll get to that exhaust in just a sec. First thing, up on the door, nice material all the way up and across. Even this pattern here by your arm, a soft and somewhat padded armrest right here and a really nice big bulky grab handle. As you saw, all your seat controls are right there in memory settings and there's even this glossy black door handle. So it's all integrated really well. The storage down here is definitely really small though. So for example, this is my typical bottle that I put in here. It does not fit at all. Just to the inside, you'll find your trunk opener, rear fog lights, interior brightness and lane keeping. And the steering wheel can be heated. Ours is not, it, it's also leather wrapped though, so it is very comfortable to hold on to. You don't have a center stripe, but you do have a little bit of stitching in the middle there. And some pretty nice large paddle shifters back here as well. The nice thing is this will give you rain sensing windshield wipers, which is always a bonus. Our display is similar to what I just showed you in the F-Pace. So this is fully customizable. It's a 12.3 inch screen. You can have a center meter just like that you control everything with the steering wheel you can keep it with just a center meter like that or you can go through different layouts and have different information on the left or the right you can have two dials you can make this whole thing your map basically whatever you want there's a lot of different customization it's just kind of slow getting to it but once it's set you're good to go if you're looking for a head-up display in here you will not find one there is no head-up display but this display down here definitely does a nice job now as we come over take a look at this this is integrated well those are actually air vents inside of there there's a little speaker up there it blends well with the dash and the stitching the nice materials overall but watch this as we turn the air on depending on what vents we are using that will automatically pop up if those air vents are needed you still have some vents on the side but those can go up or go down if you need to i definitely wonder how long that's going to last going up and down but it's kind of a cool feature and this is the 10 inch pv pro system i like the layout and setup for the most part i don't like it as much as what it is in the f pace that i just showed you but you have these shortcuts down here this is touch screen this is also a customizable home screen you can pretty much have it however you want and it's easy to operate that is a big bonus you will get apple carplay and android auto standard it's just not going to be wireless you have to be wired in of course there's navigation there's sirius xm we've got a meridian sound system with 380 watts right off the bat but we also have the optional meridian sound system which is 12 speakers and two subwoofers and in this car it definitely sounds pretty nice and i love how you can actually control the sub independent of the bass and different types of sound down here now while we're up here let me go to the camera so i just turned the air off and those just went back down but let me go into reverse so we have parking sensors front and rear but we just have this basic backup camera you will get dynamic guidance lines which is nice but no surround view camera if you're looking for that and then down here single zone climate is actually standard but we have dual zone climate so you and your passenger get your own you can push this to turn on your cooled seats for three tier or your heated seats for three tier so you got both of those just down from there you have a little bit more for your ac controls nothing too much you do have to control a little bit on the screen like if you want to control exactly where the fan is going so it's a little bit annoying that you don't have full control down here but it's a nice layout regardless and i like the materials around here it's not just some cheap shiny black plastic all around there's a little bit here but this kind of knurled look is pretty nice this is where you can turn it to dynamic mode you might have been able to hear the pitch because the exhaust turns on as well you can turn off your auto stop start right there electronic brake and then the cup holders are tucked in back here. They're definitely really small, but they are snug to hold bottles in. So if you're actually driving pretty crazy, you don't have to worry too much about them. The armrest is also small. I mean, everything is pretty compact in here. You will definitely notice that. I'll complain about something in a second. This is somewhat soft. Open it up. This is really small inside. I mean, basically just enough for some sunglasses and a wallet. There's a couple USB charging ports there as well and a 12 volt power outlet. One bonus is you do have this uh, button push glove box which is actually pretty good size and there's an automatic dimming rearview mirror standard right there but check this out these little visors are just hilarious i mean it's so small you still get a little vanity light or a little vanity mirror here i should say even though that is also tiny they don't slide out so if you have some sun problems over here 
with this huge window, you're in trouble. Optional, we also have this fixed panoramic roof. This does not open, but you can get this glass as an option. You know, you can cover it with this. It just won't open up like a regular roof. And at night, we actually get the optional premium cabin lighting. So we have five different ambient light colors. It's not quite as nice as the F-Pace, but it's still a nice touch in this car. Now, if I would have to say my complaint about this interior, it's not the materials, it's not the features, it's just the functionality. Really, the only area to stash something is the cup holders, like my keys I kind of throw in there sometimes, because this is really small and it's compact with my sunglasses in there. There is a little net up here. It's really small. I mean, you could maybe throw your wallet or keys up there, but I wouldn't want them to rattle much. And your phone, you know, I've just been throwing my phone over on the seat there. I just wish there was just a little extra compartment in here to make it a little more daily friendly. So if that's important to you, keep that in mind. If you're super minimal with what you have, then it won't bother you. Under the hood, a supercharged V8 is now standard. There's two different ones. This five liter supercharged V8 with 444 horsepower, 428 pound feet of torque, paired with an eight speed automatic and pushes you zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. The F-Type R is gonna give you 575 horsepower with a 3.5 zero to 60 time. And the exhaust sounds great. There's two different modes. Let's take a listen. We are finally behind the wheel of this F-Type. And just a quick note is driver assist features wise, you can get a lane keeping system, blind spot monitors, parking sensors. You've got a camera up there. There's just no adaptive cruise control on here. But my first impression of this is that it feels very solid. It feels more substantial than its exterior size would tell you. I mean, you feel like you're in control in this car. It's just been a blast to drive to. It's I don't know if I'll say it's quite as engaging as I expected it to be for this price point, but it is still very nice, fun to drive, and we'll show you that. So it makes a big difference on the exhaust note and the overall performance if you're in dynamic mode or if you move the shifter over to S. You can use the paddle shifters with or without being in S mode, and the paddle shifters make it really fun because you can really control those RPMs. All right, I just threw us in dynamic mode, even just a little pedal. Once you get over 3500 RPM, you start to get a lot of fun. Now let's use those paddles. You really get some serious blowout that exhaust once you're around the four to 5000 RPM range. Road kill, downshift. It's just crazy the, the difference in sound going up to 3,500 RPM. Under, over. But these paddles are quick, they're fun. You've got the <laughs> deployable spoiler back there that you can see in the mirror it's a it's just a fun experience so if you really want to hear the sounds of the car i would definitely recommend staying in uh using your paddle shifters dynamic mode helps because you can really get that throaty note that exhaust supercharger you don't really hear a supercharger whine if you're looking for that but you've got some amazing sound get a little window crack oh, oh my gosh it just sounds fantastic Now, that's really the main reason you're gonna buy this car. If you wanna have fun, you buy a supercharged V8 for one reason, to have a supercharged V8 and have some fun. But if you take it out of dynamic mode, 
it's a little quieter. You don't have as much exhaust noise, but you can still push the exhaust button if you want to. And it's a little bit of a multi-purpose car. I won't say it's practical because it's not, not on the inside here, but it does have a good trunk back there. But handling and suspension wise, it has an adaptive suspension. So you're gonna get a little bit of sportiness and comfort in one package. Road noise is definitely on the high end though. Road noise is a little disappointing for a car of this price, but I mean, you gotta look at the wheels, the tires, the platform here. You gotta expect some of that. But if you're looking for just a grand touring, daily cruising kind of car, I wouldn't recommend it because of the road noise. But if that's not a big deal, then who really cares? The road noise is enough to make me a little frustrated because sometimes trying to listen to this really nice Meridian audio system, a little annoying just because of the road noise but that that's just my complaint personally otherwise ergonomics wise in here i like the way everything is laid out for the most part i just wish we had a little bit more storage in here super small complaint for what most people are going to drive this for though it's really all about this exhaust i hope you can hear that now we're on a rougher textured road going low speeds you can definitely hear a lot of noise let's get on it and the brakes in here also do a really nice job the brakes feel nice and beefy they look good as well well let's go ahead and wrap things up so to wrap things up on this 2022 F-Type, this is not the top F-Type R, but still you get a supercharged V8 standard no matter what. You've got the looks, it's aggressive looking, You've got those huge haunches in the back, the nice leather wrapped interior, and pretty much all the amenities that you are looking for in a sports coupe. The one bummer about the sound is that you don't really get much until you get those RPMs up pretty high, but that also makes it nice for daily driving too, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I had a blast with this car. There's a lot to offer. It's just obviously not practical with the two seats and with not much storage inside, but it's got a pretty big trunk in the back. And if you just need two seats, you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up would be super helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great rest of your day.